It'll go down in history as one of the great leaders of Russia, but then say, but I, I'm afraid he could undermine all of that by staying around and not opening up and finding ways to make this system live without him, and not necessarily the exact same system, but make Russia, you know, live without Putin. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, Russia's leadership, Vladimir Putin, president once more. Russia's March 2012 presidential election has all but been decided. It's almost certain that Vladimir Putin, once president of Russia, will serve in that post again. Putin, now Russia's prime minister, orchestrated his likely return to the presidency with cooperation from the nation's current president, Dmitry Medvedev. Few experts expect major policy changes, notes Clifford Gaddy as he takes a closer look. Cliff, what does this mean for U.S.-Russia relationships, for the reset, for nuclear arms, for all the progress that the two countries have made in the last couple of years? Well, Putin was in charge all along. He may not have directed every single statement that Medvedev made and every single action that he took. He certainly approved them. There, there, it's unthinkable that any major foreign policy initiative that Russia took in these past four years was not done without Putin's approval. And that includes the reset. That includes the relationship with the U.S. And there is no reason to think that simply because Putin is president, there will be any change in this general approach to the U.S. Now, that having been said, there could be a different reaction from the U.S. side. And there is. Congress can see the return of Putin as a sign of, of move back to the Soviet Union. Uh, he's a very unpopular figure, as we know, in uh, American political circles, in the press, and editorial writers, and so forth. So I, I could actually see some shift in U.S. policy towards Russia because Putin coming back, but not Putin um, directly being ready to initiate some, some change. Vladimir Putin is a very, very interesting man. He thinks and very often acts as an autocrat, yet he endorses and embraces a private sector economy. What's his angle? What does Putin really want? Even during the Soviet period, I, I imagine that he was, he was convinced the Soviet system didn't work. State ownership, central planning, it just didn't work. Um, and he stuck to that, that principle of wanting in basically to have an economy that is, that is uh, private with private owners. Um, but he knows that you know, the resources, the wealth, the companies that are owned to now by these individuals, the so-called oligarchs, uh, some of whom are some of the absolutely richest people in the world, they're multi-billionaires, the dilemma is how do you rein them in? How would you, how would you manage them if, if I am the leader of the country with the strategic interest of the nation at heart, uh, can I simply count on them being so patriotic and national-minded that they would sub subordinate their own commercial interest to the interest of the state? No, I can't. That sums up the challenge of his political economy, is how to reconcile this an economy based primarily on private ownership with an economy that still serves what he regards as the strategic, or gives supremacy to the strategic interest of the state and the, and, and the national interest of Russia. Well, Putin has a very interesting way of governing. And so does his methodology make him the last czar, as some observers have written, or is he more like the CEO of Russia Incorporated? This is Russia Incorporated in an almost literal sense. These guys are not the head of this incredibly large aluminum conglomerate and this, head, this big oil and gas conglomerate and this and that. They are, you're the head of our gas division. You're the head of our aluminum division. You're the head of our whatever. So, but we coordinate all this together, the ultimate, and, and you have a lot of autonomy. In fact, you're, you're out there to, to do your best uh, working with your separate part of this, this, this conglomerate. But I, Vladimir Putin, I'm the CEO of, of this whole operation. Ultimately, what motivates him? Is it power? Is it money? Is it Russia? He has 
a messianic streak. He thinks fate, history, God, whatever, put him in this position to do what only he could do. Um, and to the extent that he's been successful, and there are many ways in which he's been successful, this just vindicates that vision. He cares about the power because it's only by him having the power that he can realize this mission. And so they become conflated in a way that it just makes it, for him, looking at it from his standpoint, it's just totally academic exercise to ask. Do you want power or do you want, you know, for yourself or do you want Russia as a, as a, as a respected great nation, as, as great civilization? He wants them both, and the only way you can get one, you know, is with the other. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.